They said there were three things that Shias do that make them dangerous. They said the first thing about Shias is they have love of Imam Hussein. That love of Imam Hussein, brothers and sisters, makes you absolutely fearless against the enemies within our own nafs or when you're compelled to do duty on the outside Imam Hussein gave everything in the way of Allah for me to go over and carry out my duties in a society which is not going to do anything to me it's the least I can do in the way of Allah I'm ready to give everything I have in the way of Allah now what happens is that some people and there's some hands at work too and they'll take a powerful concept like the concept of Imam Hussein and turn it into a means for me to commit sin. For me, they'll make Imam Hussein the same way that Christians believe in Jesus Christ. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For some people, they push this message for Imam Hussein. All you have to do is cry for Imam Hussein and you're saved. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but that's crazy. Allah has 99 names, they say, but crazy isn't one of them. You don't have taqwa, you're going to burn in hell. That's what hell's for. So we have to have that basic taqwa. But they said one of those things is if the Shias understand the concept of Imam Hussein properly, these guys are dangerous. The other thing they said was that Shias believe in the 12th Imam. No matter how bad the situation gets, we never lose hope. Other people are worried about global warming, the financial situation, misery, depression, you know, the swine flu, you know, worried about their neighbors, worried about every other thing. But for me as a Shia, I'm sitting here, cooling out, doing my thing, and I know it's just getting better. Yes, there's difficulties. Yes, I have not new taklif, duty, but I'm not worried about anything. The best is yet to come. Another thing that makes them dangerous, and this one they really don't like, is that you believe in the concept of marja'iyah. You believe in a marja. We have to follow those people who have the criteria that the Ahlul Bayt have explained. And those people for us, their word is the word of God. Which means we have unity. Now there are forces at work to get our youngsters to doubt in the issue of taqlid. To doubt in marja'iyya. Not to follow a marja. But if you want to be one of the elite soldiers of the 12th Imam, you have to be making taqlid. You have to be doing your wajibat. Best is yet to come.